California's President Reagan had invited the Queen to visit his home state. In February 1983, she took his invitation up. The San Francisco Boys Chorus practiced with their conductor for a gala concert in the Queen's honor. Americans have always been deeply curious about royalty. It's the Queen carrying her purse. It's not cocky. Well, she carries a compact and this little thing of lipstick and some pocket money. Is this what the Queen carries? Yes. How did you learn that? How much, See, how much money? In social studies <laughs> class yesterday, instead of doing social studies, we read about the Queen and it said that she carries How old is the Queen? I think she's just about... Yes. She's about five. And that's young. That's young. Ernest. I was asking if, if she was young or if she was old. Well, what do you think 56 is? Old. Oh. You, you would think that. Your Majesty. Much better. Holler, holler next time. All right, let's hear you holler. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, may I present Fred Campagnoli? The mayor of San Francisco. Your Majesty, there is the Great War Memorial Board of Trustees. The symphony hall begins to fill up. Time for a final rehearsal. I need everyone's attention, including the girls. The girls on stage right should wave your flags with your right hand. I see girls hitting each other with the flag because some are using left and some right. Matthew, if he doesn't have grapes and is not throwing the boys, I don't suspect him, I suspect you. Why does he think you're throwing them at boys? I'm not asking you, Peter. You and I have our problems too, don't we, Peter? Let's get over them, okay? Do it my way and you'll be all right. What's that mess in front of you, Peter? I think her popularity is because she looks stable and she looks responsible and she looks respectable. And these are virtues Americans like. I heard a number of people here in San Francisco during this visit say with a considerable amount of sympathy, the poor woman, she just has to stand there and shake all those hands and that's her entire life. But it's said with a certain amount of, of pride and affection. very interesting to watch as a woman watching another woman perform. It was also obvious to me that this is kind of a lifetime of learning how, through all kinds of stresses and strains, wartime, peacetime, good economic times, bad economic times, people who like you, people who don't. And is one reason most Americans like her because of their innate fondness for family sagas? I think Americans are interested in families, they're interested in big groups, and it, it shows up in the television shows they're interested in, they're interested in Dallas, they're interested in Dynasty, Falcon Crest, all these kinds, of, they've always been, there's always been family TV shows, and the bigger, the more famous, the more complications, the more little scandals, you know, all of that stuff fascinates Americans, and I think that's why they're interested in the, or part of why they're interested in the royal family. Do you think this particular family's got a lot of the elements of the ideal soap opera family in it? Oh, yes. Why, in what Perfect way? mother, kids that fool around. I mean, it's great. But some Americans, especially those with a cause to espouse, take a more hostile view. We have no truck with queens. We're a country that got fed up with George III. We thought he was a fat German person who had no business here, and we sent him home. Cost a lot of dead to send him home. And that is not a comment on the British. The concept of a Republican nation, however, curtsying and bowing and lining up to see a royal personage would clearly be offensive to the founders of our nation. And then, of course, we see the problem in Ireland. We see the British differently than they see themselves. As well as personal socializing with the president, this was the Reagan's 31st wedding anniversary, the Queen took the opportunity on this visit to mend any broken fences in her country's relationship with the United States. She expressed publicly Britain's gratitude both for their support in the Falklands War and as our chief ally in NATO. But tonight, as on most nights, the main topic was the weather. Kind of a coincidence, <laughs> because you were first to San Francisco, 
They had the worst North Atlantic storm in a hundred Thank years. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> that happens all the time. These coincidences, uh, don't they? I think Americans would reject the idea of having a royal family, not only because it's part of our culture not to have a monarch, but the expense of it, and more than the expense, People, when they have a monarch, or especially if they have a royal family with any history, going back a number of generations, they gamble on that family. There's a big risk involved. That the family itself is decent enough and reliable enough and well enough trained so that it does represent the aspirations of the people. I wouldn't want to run that risk and start that institution now. For a seafaring nation, the Queen once said, a royal yacht is not a luxury, but a necessity. Not only as somewhere to entertain foreign heads of state in style, but as a home from home where she can relax and renew herself after the rigors of a 10 or 12 hour day. The royal yacht is part of the royal show. Here, with Canada's prime minister and his sons on board, she arrives in Vancouver Harbor. One guest on a previous visit to North America was the wife of the then Foreign Secretary. I asked the Queen on our last night on Britannia how on earth she dealt with this appalling uh, standing for hours on end without tiring. Whereupon the Queen looked down and hoisted her evening skirt above her ankles, put her feet thus, and said, one puts one's feet apart, one keeps them parallel. Always remember to keep your weight balanced evenly. That's all there is to it. There's nothing more exhausting than having a small talk with people you've never seen before for 14 hours at a stretch, except for half an hour in between engagements to change clothes, wash one's face, start all over again. After three, four days of this, I fainted and broke my jaw, I who had the least onerous of all responsibilities. At the end of the royal visit, two of the courtiers who were trained in these extraordinary responsibilities, two of them went into hospital. The six and a half foot equerry, rugged creature, said he'd never known anything like it in his life, and only the queen showed not the slightest sign of wear and tear. Oh, John Osman, I have a piece for the six o'clock. The Queen and Prince Philip on board the Royal Yacht Britannia. One of the many reporters on the West Coast tour was BBC Radio's court and diplomatic correspondent, John Osman. Take today, I mean, Britannia sailed at six. Presumably she got up a little later than that. Uh, it's quite possible that uh, she may have listened to the BBC World Service. Uh, she will probably have read telegrams from London and any urgent business or state papers which she has to sign or absorb, she will have looked at that either in the morning or late in the evening when she's finished her day's engagement. Victoria, British Columbia, 9.15 p.m. The yacht is tied up alongside. Today, the Queen has unveiled a plaque, dedicated two cathedral bells, watched a Chinese lion dance, inspected a military college, school, and several guards of honor, attended a concert, and given a reception. And even that, as she told Trudeau, was not the end of it. We've just been lighting a bonfire. Simply covered everybody with smoke, and uh, it will be out very quickly. It's light, because it? it's right on top of the hill. So I mean, it just blew absolutely completely straight out. Because I mean, we've had to, we've had to change, you know, our plans all the time. <laughs> because we, I think the yacht's just been enveloped in one huge um, low, you know. And wherever we went, the, the heavens opened and the wind blew, and it's followed us all the way up. And you haven't searched for a Jonah aboard. Perhaps me, <laughs> me. <laughs> the band to play now. Oh, that'd be fun. Shall we stand on there? Yes. Have you got a coat? I think I'll get one if I may. Might be an idea. Philip. Well, <laughs>